When looking to enter the wildlife filmmaking scene, it's important to spend time around people with similar ambitions and mindsets. This series follows my adventures in and around the Bristol area with like-minded photographers and filmmakers, where we'll explore the beautiful British countryside, have some unique wildlife encounters, and make sure absolutely none of it is serious. This is Wildlife Wonders. Hello everyone, so Matt is behind me here. This is Matt, I'm gonna put him on my hand. Boop. There we go. Um, and we've come down to Eastville Park this morning at around, I left at around 4 a.m. and we got here at 5 a.m. This is a, a work day as well, so I'm, gonna, I'm off to work later. But um, we've come to see kingfishers today and um, we've seen one fly past. We know they're around this area. Matt saw one, took a great photo, which I'll put in here, of one on the on the railing. We're gonna see if we can see them again. This morning we sat for about an hour down by the weir there, and um, while we were sitting there, we spent some time getting long exposure photos of the waterfall. I put a couple of those in, um, but it was a bit too dark to film anything, especially with the GH5, because the sensor's not that big. There's a little grey wagtail, as always, sitting down on the weir down there. They're very sweet. They always sit and bounce along on top of the waterfalls. We've seen a dipper come in, fly off. We saw a dipper, it flew away. I didn't see the dipper. Didn't see it dip in? I didn't see it dip in, dip out, dip anything. All I saw was it dipper pointing. It just depends whether you're quick enough. But today, we're all about the kingfishers. Awesome. You right? Yeah. <laughs> Matt's about to take up position as well, but he is getting heavily distracted by all other photographic objects. Oh, there he goes. Matt, you're going to need to sit down at some stage. Just... Don't, don't put that in the video. <laughs> right, so we've been sat there, well, I've been sat there for about an hour. <laughs> more than that. Yeah, probably more than an hour to be fair. Um, absolutely no sign of any kingfishers. So the plan is, we've got about an hour left. We're gonna go and end the day looking around the lake. I'm not 100% confident on getting close-ups or anything like that, but you never know. We'll give it a go, you don't know what we're gonna see as well. Okay, so. We have found kingfishers and it's joyous. Um, there were three of them down here feeding. Matt just didn't believe me, went off that way. Second time, didn't believe me, went off that way both times. Hang on. Both times, Hang on. I texted him and said, they're kingfishers down here. I didn't disbelieve you. Well, I just assumed they'd be gone by the time I got there. He made an assumption and it was a very dangerous one to make. If he'd been on his own, that would have been the end of it. But luckily, he had me. But there was a kingfisher over there. There's a young one basically in these trees behind me here. And they are feeding under this thing. It really is very good because there's three of them all together. And after wanting to see like one kingfisher before I came to Bristol, there's three of them all having a great time. Ooh, feeding. All having, a, having a lovely day. Having a lovely day and they keep flying over and coming around this island so I'll, I'll put some footage in there
exactly that was a success. We saw the kingfishers, but I want to see and get a better photo. So um, we'll just wait, and next time now we know that they're here, we'll, we'll probably come back quite quite soon and have a look. But that's that's that. Sorry, I didn't do much of the chat in between. Probably a good thing. And uh, see you in see you in a, in a week maybe, which will actually just be instantaneous in this video. Bam. <laughs> Due to this being one of the first vlogs I ever recorded a year ago, I actually completely forgot to vlog on that day. I was so focused on the kingfishers and I spent half of my time submerged in the river, as Matt will explain, with my poncho on, camouflaged against the leaves. I did manage to get some pretty good sights of the kingfishers and I'll put them in at the end, but first we're going to see things from Matt's perspective and see how his day went before moving on to mine. Substantial Kingfisher update. That was really quite exciting. We've had them fly past both ways. So amazingly, I'm sat watching three Kingfishers fishing and then landing on a branch. The trouble is the branch is on the other side of the river. Matt has headed around to try and get a shot on the bank. He's got a lightweight kit so he can sort of climb down without making too much of a disturbance. Sort of get level with them and then wait. I think Matt's getting in the water. Matt's got one just landed in front of him. Stress! Got the shot! Okay, so it's not like an amazing behaviour shot or anything like that, but I filled the frame with a kingfisher, which is like something I never thought I'd do. Kingfishers, where I grew up, were just so skittish and always miles away, and I never got to see them. And for me, that is one of the beauties of urban wildlife, is that you can get close to these things. Wow. Oh, I am so happy with that. Basically, it's just gone from one thing to another, and we've been watching them dive and fish and feed the juveniles for quite some time now.
no kingfishers as of yet. However, today has become a sad day. Uh, today is the day that the stool broke. I'm going to have to resign to rock. Yeah, to like the it. commoners, like yourself. Yeah, you're fit like us. But I was a lad. <laughs> You'd be lucky if you had a seat. Oh, and on that was cardboard box in the middle of the road. You and your seats. On that note, uh, back to the waiting for Wilder. Hopefully, it will land on that there fence. Uh, oh. Let's discuss the wonders of pseudo copulation. <laughs> There's a peregrine calling. It's right up there. There is literally a peregrine right above us. Hello. 